Can these five steps make you more profitable in trading? Well, in this video, I'm not only going to show you some of the most useful trading techniques, but I'm also going to execute it in live market, so you can actually see how it will look when you will trade with real money. Also, check out other strategies videos in the Strategies Tested 100 Times series, where we tested different strategies 100 times to find their win rates, because some of the data mentioned in this video is based on that series, and don't forget to subscribe to the Trading Rush channel. After all, you don't want to use a strategy that doesn't even work. If you have been trading for a while, you have probably realized that not all trading charts are worth trading. There are times when you should take more trades, because the market is perfect for booking big profits. But then there are times when you should completely avoid trading, because if you do, you might end up with multiple losing trades in a row. Instead of immediately looking for new trades, the first thing you should do is analyze if the market is worth trading or not. So when I started recording this video, the Forex pairs were not really that good for taking trades. As you can see, on the Euro USD pair the 200 period moving average was looking flat, and the price was crossing it multiple times in a short amount of time. If you have watched my previous videos, you know I use and recommend using a 200 period exponential moving average to find the long term trend, because it's the easiest way to find the trend, and if we take trade in the direction of the long term trend, we can achieve greater reward to risk ratios. In other words, we can make more money. So on these Forex pairs, I'm looking for a chart, where price is staying above the 200 period moving average for a while, and where the moving average is not looking flat. Furthermore, the price action should look cleaner. For example, look at these two charts. Here the first chart looks much cleaner than the second chart. On the first chart, the price is staying above the moving average, and is not looking flat. This kind of chart is perfect for beginner traders, as the price action is easier to read, and your stop loss won't get taken out because of a choppy price movement. Just like the Euro USD pair, the GBP USD and GBP JPY were also looking choppy. Even though they were below the moving average, the price action was not cleaner like the price action we saw in the example. Many people lose money by taking too many losing trades in a bad market. If your charts look similar to these, you should probably avoid trading at that time. When I started recording this video, most of the Forex charts were looking like this. So instead of taking trades in these choppy conditions, I closed the charting platform and came back later when the price action was smoother. Few hours later, the price action on the NZD USD pair was much cleaner. The price was above the moving average. Furthermore, the 200 period moving average was not looking flat. Once you filter the bad charts, and find a good forex pair, it's time for the step 2, where we will use the multi-time frame analysis to find more information about the chart. By more information I mean the points of interest where price has a higher probability of reacting. Sometimes, when you trade on a smaller time frame, you might end up taking long trades, at a strong resistance level that is clearly visible on the daily time frame. This lack of information can make you lose money. In this example, I'm on the 5 minutes time frame. So to find the important levels that many people can easily see, I will switch to the daily time frame. Here I will draw the strong support and resistance levels that I can see. Since we are using the 5 minutes time frame to enter trades, switching to the daily is not really necessary according to some people. But I like to do it to make sure I don't end up taking short trade on a smaller time frame at a strong daily support. If you don't know how to draw strong support and resistance areas, check out the support and resistance level video on the Trading Rush channel, it has some good examples that you will find helpful. As you can see the price couldn't cross the resistance level, and also reacted to the support level. Since we are trading on a 5 minutes time frame which is much smaller than this, we can say that there is enough room for us to take long and short trades on the 5 minutes time frame. Right now we are not on a strong support or resistance level. Once we have identified the areas on the daily time frame, switch to the 4 hours time frame, and look for other clearly visible areas. As you can see the price is currently near a support level. If we switch to the 30 minutes time frame, we can clearly see that the price reacted to that support level. Now if we switch to our entry time frame which is 5 minutes, 
We will have more information than before. First we only knew that the price was in an uptrend. But now we also know that the price is near a support level. Now in the third step, we will use an entry signal indicator. I'm using the MACD indicator in this example. MACD strategy was one of the best trading strategies that we have tested in the strategies tested 100 times series. If you want to learn more about it, check out the MACD video on this channel. As you can see, the MACD has not given an entry signal yet, but we can tell that it is going to because the momentum is slowing down. I have also made a second MACD video where I explained how to use the histogram to our advantage. Check that video as well. Since patience is the key, I waited for the MACD to give an entry signal which was around 20 minutes later. As you can tell by looking at the histogram value, the MACD has given a crossover. It is a small crossover, so it can be difficult to see on some mobile screens. The entry according to the MACD strategy is at the closing price of the crossover candle or at the opening price of the next candle. If you use a different entry signal indicator at this step, take entry according to your entry strategy. Now remember, in the third step, we are not executing the trade yet because there is one more thing you have to calculate. In the fourth step, you have to calculate the position size by looking at your stop loss strategy. A lot of new traders make the mistake of setting a bad stop loss. Your stop loss has to be far enough from the entry so the price have enough room to wiggle around before going in your favor. And you have to decide where you want to set your stop loss before taking the trade. That's because to get a consistent loss amount, you have to calculate your position size using your stop loss distance. I have explained more about this in my ATR indicator video and in the part 7 of small account challenge series. Check them out if you want to learn more. According to the MACD strategy, the stop loss goes just below the swing low, which also happens to be below the support area in this case. In the step 5, it's time to set the profit target. In this example, I'm going to use a fixed profit target, which will be 1.5 times greater than my risk. To get a 1.5 to 1 reward to risk ratio, I can simply multiply my stop loss by 1.5 to get my profit target. Once you have calculated all of these values, you can enter the trade. It might look like it takes a lot of time to calculate the stop loss, position size, and profit target before executing the trade, but it only takes few seconds once you get a hang of it. Furthermore, even if you are trading on a smaller time frame like 5 minutes, you will have enough time to calculate everything properly. Once you have taken the trade with a stop loss and profit target, you can simply close your trading platform if you are not looking for new trades. Once you have taken a trade, there is not really a point in staring at your chart. The price is either going to touch your stop loss or your profit target. In this case, the live trade I took using the MACD strategy was profitable. Furthermore, it went exactly how we predicted and even reacted to the resistance area we drew using the daily time frame. With only five simple steps, we were able to execute a profitable trade. That's all. Now you know a little bit more about trading. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe and ring that notification bell for more trading videos, and check out other videos on the Trading Rush channel to find some of the best trading strategies that actually work. And thanks to all the patrons for supporting the Trading Rush channel on Patreon. Thanks a lot.